Franek, what yeah, we know sure. that there are thousands of people uh, protesting in Belarus against further integration with Russia. It was, uh, I don't know what, whether it was expected to you, but um, in this highlight of the year, we want to show you what was the major things for Belarus, where it's all leading, what to expect in 2020. So in 2019, Belarus has uh, opened um, um, the diplomacy to the United States for more than 10 years. We didn't have U.S. embassy and U.S. ambassador present in Minsk. So this year was kind of a year of the opening uh, to the West. But same time, Russia was tightening its control over Belarus economy, energy sphere, and of course, uh, political and military sphere. So what we expect, we expect uh, the next round of negotiations and trade on major Belarusian uh, companies, um, industries, because it seems that Putin and Kremlin doesn't want Lukashenko and Belarus uh, go to the West. So Lukashenko is trying to play his own card, the card of the defender of independence, but so far not so successfully. So what we will expect in 2020, you know, what I understand you have also the elections uh, or not. So uh, let us know what to watch. So we had parliamentary elections, uh, sterile results, no opposition uh, politicians in parliament. Lukashenko is very afraid of any alternative in the government, in the elites, um, in 2020, we expect presidential elections. Some opposition candidates announce their campaigns, but it seems he doesn't have really strong alternatives. So uh, it, it doesn't seem it doesn't seem neither that he is going to lead. So basically, what he wants, he wants a status. He wants uh, the same uh, to preserve the same swing policy between the West and Moscow. He wants to get cheap energy, oil and gas from Russia, and at the same time uh, to, to, to sustain uh, the trade and uh, um, the, uh, strategy on opening to the West in order to preserve uh, control and some, um, uh, so, so, some alternatives and some jokers in his hand to play against Putin.